and I want to welcome you to our webinar, How to Run Your First Two Facebook Ads in Constant Contact. Thanks again for joining us today. When it comes to social media, the landscape has changed over the years, and in many cases, you do have to pay to reach people. Facebook ads are a great way to find new customers, drive business, sell more, and even grow your email list. However, for many, the thought of running your first Facebook ads can seem intimidating and expensive, especially when you aren't sure what you're doing. And we get that. You don't want to waste money, so you want to make sure that you're creating ads that get results. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So just a question before we dive in, who here has done any sort of online advertising before? And what platforms do you use? I'll put that in the chat window. We got Josh saying he's tried a Facebook ad through Facebook. Seems like most people are saying, no, they haven't done an ad yet, which is okay. That's why we're here to kind of get you started. Alrighty. Well, yeah, so for those of you who have never done any sort of advertising before, Facebook is one of the easiest platforms to get started on. Facebook has a large audience reach, and these ads are fairly cost-effective when you compare them to other forms of ads, such as Google ads. Facebook ads also help you reach consumers where they're at, on both desktop and mobile. As a consumer, you're likely already familiar with seeing ads in your Facebook newsfeed. You see them, so you know they work, and they're a great way to get your brand in front of more users on Facebook. On mobile, they're designed to be part of the rest of the content that you're seeing in your newsfeed, so they look like they are the other posts. So with the right content, you as the consumer are encouraged to click on that. On desktop, they appear on the right side of your page as you're browsing, getting you another opportunity to get your message in front of people, no matter where they're viewing it at. For all these reasons, we are going to break down the steps you'll need to create your first two Facebook ads and talk about the tips that will help you be successful along the way. We'll be showing you how to create Facebook ads more easily using Constant Contact specifically. We've simplified the process, making it easier than ever for you to create and manage your own ads. In the end, you'll be able to understand what worked for your ads and what you'll want to adjust so you can be even more successful in the future. And before we dive into everything, allow me to introduce myself again. My name's Caitlin, and I'm a team lead here at Constant Contact. I'm well versed in email and online marketing and excited to bring my experience to the session. So let's go ahead and get to it. And let's start by seeing more specifically what we're going to cover today. First, we're going to start by talking about the two different types of Facebook ads you'll want to use as you start advertising. Then we'll discuss how to design an effective Facebook ad. Then in a demo, we'll show you how to set everything up in constant contact. We'll walk you through setting up and connecting the needed accounts. And then in a live constant contact account, we'll show you how to create the two types of ads we're going to talk about. And rest assured, you'll learn plenty of tips for creating successful ads along the way. So let's go ahead and start talking about the different types of ads we suggest creating for Facebook. Now there's two types of ads on Facebook you might run, lead ads and click ads. Lead ads allow you to target new audiences on Facebook and grow your list. You can target the demographics and locations that matter most to your organization with a sign-up form and collect new leads, which get added into a contact list in Constant Contact. As a consumer, when clicking on a lead ad, you're not taken to an external website or out of Facebook at all. 
you're taken to a sign-up form within the Facebook app to fill out your information. What's great is a lot of the fields will be pre-populated already since Facebook has that information about someone. So it's a really low touch way for someone to give you their contact information. Most of the time they just have to click submit and they'll be added to your list. We recommend engaging with these people right away with a welcome email and other automation tools within Constant Contact. It's a great idea to offer an incentive for signing up like a coupon or exclusive content, and then you can start nurturing those leads from there. And then we have a click ad, which takes the consumer out of Facebook right away to drive traffic to your website to generate awareness or your online store to boost sales or any other web page that will help you engage your audience and meet your goal. You can use it for list growth if you'd like to connect a lead generation landing page, but it's a better practice to use it, these click ads for those other goals, like getting people to buy in the moment or find you online. Click ads are designed to drive results. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how much it costs to run an ad. Here at Constant Contact, we've done some analysis on the results customers are generating with our Facebook ad tools. It does depend on your industry, so let's take a look at some of the stats for a few different industries. So we know that consumers who use our Facebook lead ads tool generate 85 leads per ad at an average cost of $1.44 per lead. Retail customers who use the Facebook lead ads generate an average of 198 leads per ad at an average cost of 84 cents a lead. Then for real estate, they generate an average of 22 leads per ad at an average cost of $2.65 per lead. And then looking at nonprofits, they generate an average of 59 leads per ad at an average cost of $1.30 per lead. So in general, a dollar or so per lead or click is a great benchmark and around where you should be. If you're paying more than one or two dollars a lead or a click, you'd want to investigate why that's the case. Maybe your targeting is off or your messaging is ineffective. And we'll be talking about those things here in a minute. When it comes to the click ads, just a few more stats. Customers who use the Facebook and Instagram ads generate an average of 510 clicks at a cost of 15 cents per click. Retail customers generate an average of 596 clicks at a cost of 14 cents per click. For the real estate group, they generate an average of 324 clicks at a cost of 16 cents per click and nonprofits who use our Facebook and Instagram ads generate an average of 425 clicks at a cost of 18 cents a click. Audience size and the messaging in the ad also plays a role here as well. There's no one size fits all recommended size for your audience, but you do wanna have a big enough audience. In general, <clears throat> a few thousand would be recommended as a bare minimum, and then can go up from there if needed. One thing about the ads as well is that Facebook knows which of its users have a propensity to click and which have a propensity to fill out leads and buy online. So the more people that start clicking, the more data Facebook is collecting. So no matter the size of your audience, Facebook will find more and more people like that. All right, so now we have some good benchmarks and a, an idea of the types of ads you can run. Let's discuss some strategies to design an effective ad. In order to determine the type of ad you want to run, and in order to be effective with that ad, the first thing you need to do is set a goal. You may be looking to increase sales, drive traffic to your website, collect RSVPs for an event, grow your audience, get more volunteers, or collect donations as just a few examples. 
So tell me, what is your primary goal for your business? What are you looking to accomplish with an ad? And while you're typing your answers in, I'll answer your question, Tiana. The price per click, um, that means those are the number of people that have clicked on the ad. So the ad we're talking about there links to like a website, an online store. So that's how many average clicks those ads get. And then you're the one paying that amount. So that's sort of an average amount per click, but you pay your overall amount. We'll talk about all that later. But uh, yeah, just to give you a quick idea there. So in terms of goals, Francesca is looking to increase sales and get new clients. Megan says grow business and profitability. Brenda says drive first time traffic, get first contacts for emails. Awesome, yeah, those are all great goals. Knowing that goal is what will help you make the decision of the ad you want to run. So if you wanna drive traffic to your site, create brand awareness, or sell a product, a click ad is best. It's the most direct way to have them take the action you want them to take because you're giving them a specific call to action. When you wanna grow your email or contact list and own your audience, a lead ad is best. What's great about the lead ad is you're still getting your name out there, but then you're also collecting the information of those clicking on the ad so you can continue to follow up with them by email and nurture those leads. You can reach out to them directly and continue to keep your name top of mind after they've interacted with the ad. With that goal in mind, you'll need to, de you'll need to determine what content to put in the ad, specifically what you're offering. You always wanna offer something of value. If it's a click ad, explain how the product or service you're offering will benefit them, or even promote a sale or promotion. For a lead ad, you'll wanna offer something of value in return for signing up, whether it's a coupon, free resource, or even a giveaway. Giveaways are an especially effective way to drive signups. Asking people to sign up to be in the running for a free product or something else you wanna give away is a huge motivator for them to provide their email address because they're looking for something free. They may not purchase right away, but by collecting their email address, you can stay in touch with them and convert those leads later through your email marketing. So we're gonna be demoing the specifics of the design itself in a few minutes, but there's a few guidelines here to keep in mind. First, in the description of your ad, you have in a 125 character limit, so make sure to write to your specific audience. Focus on the main thing you want them to know and clearly explain the value they will receive from clicking on your ad. For the image you include, choose an image that draws people in. Ensure it supports your ad copy and tells a story. Choose eye-catching and brightly colored imagery. And the recommended size for that image is 1080 by 1080 pixels. The headline will give you a 25 character limit. You'll wanna use a power word to catch their attention. Think of words that evoke an emotional or psychological response. Think of the response or action you want them to take and appeal to that emotion. And the same concept can apply to your call to action button that relates to your goal. Think of things like learn more, book now, sign up, etc. When creating your ad, you'll have some preset options to choose from and you'll be able to choose the one that fits best with your goal. And then once you've determined the goal, offering, and design, you'll want to think specifically about who you want to target. As you'll see in the demo in a few minutes, you will have the option to create a new custom audience. With a custom audience, you're able to choose your audience details. Keep in mind that your estimated reach is reduced with every detail you include. 
and you can target your audience based on gender. So you can choose to target just males, just females, only males or only females. The age, so the smaller your age range, the lower your estimated reach becomes. You can choose the country you wanna advertise in, also city, state, or zip code. You wanna target your reach within a specific area, if that's applicable. And then you can add interests. Add tags to further narrow your estimated reach to Facebook users with specific interests. When determining which options will work best for you, think back to that goal. Who do you want to reach and who do you want to take action? Who is most likely to buy your product? If you don't sell online, what's the ideal proximity to your business? These considerations will help you determine what criteria is best to target for your ads. Now that we've discussed the different types of ads and how to design one effectively, let's take a look at how to get those set up within Constant Contact. Before diving into our live demo, let's first take a look at creating an ad account. Creating an ad account through Facebook is essential for running your ads. So I'm actually gonna play a short video and this is where my colleague will show exactly how that's done. And then after that, we'll walk through the ad design process live. I'm also gonna have my colleague put a link to this video in our chat, just in case there's any playback issues on our screen. But I'll play this video and be back in just a couple minutes. Hi everyone, this is Stephanie. If you've never created a Facebook ad before, you're going to need to create an ad account in order to get everything set up. And that's what I'm gonna walk you through in this video. From the Home tab or the Campaigns tab in your account, you're gonna click Create at the top of your page. And then from the Campaign menu, you're gonna choose Ads. You're gonna choose the type of ad you wanna start with. I'm gonna choose Facebook and Instagram. Next, I need to click to connect my Facebook account. I'm already logged in in my browser, so I'm just gonna add my password and click continue. Now, I've never done this before, so I see the button to create an ad account. From this, it's gonna open the business manager. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go down to the left-hand side and click more tools and I'm gonna click Ads Manager at the top of the page. I'm going to look at their anti-discrimination policy, so I wanna review the information. Now, there are some special rules for US housing, employment, and credit advertisers, so you can review that information here. Just make sure you click Accept when you're ready. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click Done. Now, if I go back to Constant Contact, most of you are probably just going to need to refresh your page, so I'm gonna do that right here. And now I'm gonna need to add my payment information, so I'll click the blue button there. Give it a minute to load up, and now I need to just click Add Payment Method right there on the top. Now I need to choose my country, the currency, and also my time zone. I'm just gonna go ahead and review that and click Save. Now I need to add all of my information. I can add business and tax information at the top or choose from credit card, PayPal, or banking information. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up with PayPal. And now I've already logged in in my browser before, so it remembers that, and it's gonna show me my banking information. I'll scroll to the bottom and just click Agree. Now I'm gonna add my business name and my address for my business, city, state, and zip code, and all of that. And when I'm done, I will go ahead and click Save. Now this is reviewing my information that I just added, which is great, I'll click close. I'm gonna click save. And now I can give my ad that I'm gonna create a name. So I'm just gonna put in test here and click save. 
And now I'm able to design my ad. All right, great. So now that we've seen how to set that part of the process up, let's jump into a live constant contact account to walk you through the steps for creating the Facebook ads themselves. Creating the ads through constant contact is going to really simplify the process for you. There's no additional fees to create the ad in constant contact. You're only paying Facebook to run the ad. And as I'm about to show you, a lot of the guesswork is taken out, and this allows you to keep this aspect of your marketing in the same place as all your others in Constant Contact. So I'm gonna open up my account here, and I will start by clicking on the Campaigns tab here at the top. From this page, we will go ahead and click on create in the top right. And then we're gonna choose the ads option here under the campaigns menu. And then now I have a choice of the different type of ad I want to run. I'm gonna start with this first one, the Facebook and Instagram ad. This is that click ad that we talked about that allows you to drive a specific action from your audience. Let me click on that. So we are focusing mostly on Facebook today, um, but like it mentions here, this is something you can post on Instagram as well. So we do have our Facebook ad account all set up following the steps that my colleague showed us in the video. So all I have to do now is name my ad and we'll start customizing. This is gonna be an ad for a brisket promotion at a barbecue restaurant. So let me copy and paste in my name. So I'm gonna call it Jack's Brisket Promo Ad. Just put today's date and save that. So now to get started, we are going to select the social pages where I want to run the ad here. So let me click edit. Once again, we've already connected our Facebook account through the steps we saw in the video. So I just need to choose the page that I want this to post for, and that is gonna be Jack's Backyard Barbecue. If I'd like, I can also have the ad run on Facebook or Instagram, like I said, using this Facebook page info. You don't actually need an Instagram account account to do this, it will be connected to your Facebook information. But at this time, I'm not going to do that, and I'll just click Save. So that now it's time to design the ad here. Let me click Edit. All right, so here's where all the customizing starts to happen. First, we have our description. Like we discussed earlier, this has a 125 character limit and it needs to be tailored to my specific audience, focus on the main thing I want them to know and clearly explain the value of what they're receiving by clicking on the ad. So in order to catch their interest in the brisket and to entice them to make a reservation, here's what I'm going to say. Save some money on a mouthwateringly delicious meal today Make a reservation to ensure you can take advantage of this deal. And then next we have the image. Remember, for this image, you need to choose one that will draw people in. Make sure it supports your ad copy and choose eye-catching imagery. So let me click here to choose my image. I have one uploaded already, but the upload option is here if you need to bring that in from your computer. I'm gonna choose a picture of the brisket. This image is 1080 by 1080 pixels, and it's showing us the brisket to show how delicious it is. Then next we have our ad headline. This is 25 characters, and we want it to have the strong, powerful language to attract your customers. For mine, I'm gonna put what the promotion is, which is buy one, get one free meal. 
this tells us what the promotion is and that word free will always catch people's attention. Moving on to the add URL, this is the page I want them to click to. In this case, this is where they go to make the reservation online to take advantage of the promotion. So I just have a link we can use for that. Just copy and paste that on in there. And then the URL to be displayed, I can actually add a different URL to, that shows on the ad. This is especially recommended if your link is longer and you'd like to display something shorter. So for mine, I will just put, let me grab it here, jacksbackyardbarbecue.com. That looks a little better. And then the last part of the design is the button. This is that call to action that's connected to the link that we put in here. There's some preset options to choose from. Choose the one that fits best with the situation and that you think will catch their attention the most based on your message. So for mine, I will do book now and that's updated there. So the design is now complete. I will click save and we can move on to the next step here. This next step is where we select the audience that the ad will be targeting. So let's edit that. First, we have to indicate the category for the ad. As you can see, I have to select if it's housing, credit, or employment related. If not, I can just choose none. There are are some special rules that can limit how you target if you're in one of those three categories, but you do need to choose the right one for your business. Otherwise, Facebook might reject the ad. So, but ours is just none. And then this is where we choose the audience the ad will be targeting. So, You'll actually see there's a couple options here. We can do a lookalike audience or create a new custom audience. The lookalike audience is a more advanced feature. We're not gonna dive in too deeply on that today, but there is an article discussing that option in the handout that you can download on the right side of your screen. For now though, let's go to new custom audience and get that set up. So here I'm choosing the gender, age, and location that I'd like to target. This is where you need to think about your intended audience and who you want to take action. Consider who's using your products and make sure to choose a location that you're located in physically or could ship to. The more criteria you add, the smaller the reach will be. At the bottom, you'll see here in a minute, it'll start showing up. It's gonna tell us the estimated reach and you don't want that to be too large actually because you do want to make sure the ad's relevant to the people that are seeing it. So for us here definitely not a gender specific promotion so I'll leave it as all. For the country we are located in the United States so I will add that. And then this is a physical location. So we need people who live by here to see the ad. It's in Waltham, Massachusetts. There it pops up for us. And then we can set the mile radius here. I'm gonna say within 30 miles of that city. The age I'll leave as 18 to 65 plus for that. All adults like to eat at restaurants, so figure that's a good age range to target there. And then we can start getting even more specific here to narrow it down and target our ideal audience with the interests. Right now, you can see our estimated reach is above 4 million, which is way too big. So I'm going to add in some of these interests here to narrow it down a bit. So let's have it include in interest in restaurants, we can do, let's see, what else here, dinner. 
food. Let's do family meal. There's a food and drink option we can do as well. And we'll just stick with those for now. Then I can do this narrow further option because you can see we're still above 3 million. So let's keep narrowing it down and set it to it must also match one of these interests. So for this, we're going to say barbecue. Barbecue restaurants. There it is. And I think that'll be good to narrow it down. And then we're going to do one more thing. We're going to exclude vegetarian. Oops. Vegetarian cuisine. That's a tough one to spell. There we go. All right, so now we're down to about 500,000. That even is a little on the bigger side still, but just for the sake of time, we'll stop there. So let's save. And now that is good to go. So then finally, we're going to determine our budget and schedule. Let's edit that. This is going to be where we set up how much we want to spend on the ad, how long it should run, and the start date. We recommend starting with a $100 budget. That's going to be the total amount that you spend on the ad. Once you indicate how long the ad will run, so I'm actually going to have it go for a full month, then it gives you the average daily spend number on the ad. It does spread out that $100 over the 30 days, basically, that the ad is running. And then we'll make the start date, let's do beginning of the year. January 1st and that's good to go there so we'll click save and now everything is filled out so all we have left to do is click publish and we get a summary here of everything we've just set up and a preview of what the finished ad will look like at this point once you publish it Facebook will review the ad that can take up to 24 hours they're making sure that the content fits with their advertising policies. It looks at images, text, targeting information, and the associated destinations for the links. For more information on the policies and prohibited Facebook content, that's another article we have linked up in that go to webinar control panel, the handout there. So feel free to read up on that later. All right, so now that we've gone through this process, let me quickly go back and show you the process for creating the Facebook lead ad. A lot of the components will be similar, but there's just a few differences that I'd like to point out. So we'll start over here. We'll go up back to campaigns. Click on create and click add. This part looks familiar. And this time we're doing the Facebook lead ad here. Once again, all the payment information has been connected ahead of time. So we'll give this a name, Jack's Barbecue Lead Ad, today's date. Let's save that and get customizing here. So first of all, select the social pages. We'll edit that. This part's the same, where I'll find the page I want it connected to, Jack's Backyard Barbecue. I'm not going to post it on Instagram at this time, and I'll click Save. Now, this next step where we're designing the ad, this is where it's going to start to look a little different. You'll see the differences here. So let's edit that and go to the ad content. We'll start there. Now, this part's still pretty familiar, but instead of driving traffic to a specific page to take action, we're wanting them to fill out their information through this ad. 
they're not actually taken to a different website, they're just taken to a different screen, which we'll see here in a minute. So for the description, we wanna put something that entices them to sign up. As we discussed earlier, offering something of value in return is a great motivator for the person to sign up. So what I'm gonna say here is, Best barbecue in town. Sign up for our email updates to receive 15% off your next meal with us. And then again, for the image, we wanna add something that catches their attention. Our goal is to get them interested in the restaurant so that they wanna provide their information for a coupon. So we'll do another picture here of the brisket sandwich this time. Then we have our headline. For that, I will put sign up for 15% off. And then for the button, there's a few different options here, although sign up fits perfectly. So then that part is good to go. So then if we come back here, we're ready to set up the lead form itself. This is where we'll indicate what information we'd like them to fill out. You don't want to require too much information as that could make them hesitate on filling it out. So I'm going to do email address, first name, and last name, and that's it. And like I mentioned earlier, what's nice is because Facebook collects that information through that person's Facebook profile, this will probably already be filled out for them and they just have to click to confirm there. So then if we go back, a few other things to fill out under this links section is we will put a website URL that it will prompt them to visit after they sign up. This is a great opportunity to establish your branding even more and give them more information about your business in the moment that they're most interested in. So I'm gonna put in a link to Jack's Backyard Barbecue's menu. Copy and paste that in there. That way, as they're signing up for this coupon, they can start looking at the menu and see what they want to order and get them even more interested in the restaurant. And then because you're collecting customer information, you do need to include a link to your company's privacy policy. Jack's Backyard Barbecue has theirs on their website. So let me copy and paste that link in here. If you don't have a privacy policy created or want more information, one more article we have in that handout talks about privacy policies. So read up on that if you'd like as well. All right, well now we're able to finish out the ad. Let's save that with the audience, the budget, the schedule. That's the exact same process as the other ad. I'm gonna target the same group of people, use the same budget. So for the sake of time, we will stop here. Once the ad is published, it'll also go through the Facebook review process. Once it goes live, there will be a list created in your Constant Contact account, and that's created automatically that those contacts will feed into. We recommend following up with those new contacts right away. If you're offering a promotion or any sort of incentive, create a welcome email with the coupon or promo code that gets sent out immediately after they sign up. This will help continue to keep them engaged and fulfill on that offer. All right, so I'd like to switch gears now and jump back into our slides. And let's talk a little bit about the reporting that you're gonna receive from these ads here. So once your ads are published and running, you're gonna start seeing the results. So let's look here first at the stats for a lead ad. The most important information you'll wanna look at is the amount of leads you received. This is the main purpose for the ad, so you will know how successful it was based on that. Impressions are important too. However, the number of people that signed up definitely impacts your overall goal more than who the ad was reaching. If you have a huge number of impressions but no leads, that's where you'll wanna take a look at making some adjustments. But if you have a lot of leads and lower impressions, then you know that your ad was very effective and you may wanna put more money behind it. 
You do also get to see the cost per lead, which is calculated by the number of leads you got divided by the amount you spent on the ad. This can vary based on your audience. If people are, if the people you're reaching are on Facebook frequently, they may be at a lower cost than an audience that isn't consistently on Facebook and doesn't use it as often. Now let's look at the click ads results. There's some differences here and some things that are similar. Here, you can see all the clicks you're generating from the ad. These are clicks on Facebook. So those people may or may not have fully loaded the page that it linked to. So it's also important to check the clicks to your site from that side of things. If you have Google Analytics or whatever your website uses to track traffic. Hopefully those numbers will be close, but there could be slight differences if they didn't fully load the page or closed out of it right away. The click-through rate is clicks divided by total impressions. The number that we have here in our report is a very healthy rate. For some digital marketing efforts to see a 3.78 click-through rate is actually really good. It means you're doing something right. You've got the right content, you're enticing people to actually click on the ad, you've got the right audience, or they're interested in what you're offering, or all of those things. We'll also see the cost per click in this report. And like I mentioned, one to $2 is a good amount. So with 55 cents on our report, we know we're doing really well. For both of these types of ads, you're also gonna be able to see audience information. First and foremost, this information should match your targeting criteria. So this ad here was targeting just Massachusetts. If it wasn't, then you'd want to understand why only people in Massachusetts were seeing the ad. Also, if you had a wide demographic, like let's say your audience was for all of the United States, this data is really helpful if you see that a lot of people in Massachusetts are giving us their lead information out of all the other states. In that case, we should put more money in targeting just Massachusetts and capitalize on that. So using this type of demographic or reach is key to understand the places where you're seeing success and then you can scale that success up. Now something to keep in mind, as with anything in marketing, you can't do something once and say it was successful or it wasn't. Use these results to fuel adjustments for future ads to get the best results. So definitely don't forget to keep an eye on your stats as your ads are running and afterward. Use the data to inform your ad decisions moving forward to test different ad designs and even adjust your targeting to better reach the right people. All right, well, before we get to all the great questions that are coming in, I'd like to take a few minutes just to recap a few things we've learned today. When it comes to creating ads, you've got to start by thinking about your end goals and even the long term. While Facebook ads can seem cumbersome and time consuming to create, remember you can more easily create Facebook ads in Constant Contact that drive results. There's no additional fee from Constant Contact to run them. Lead ads allow you to get people on your email list to build a long term relationship and communicate with them over time and click ads on Facebook drive traffic and more immediate results if you're looking to drive sales. You could even run them side by side. And don't forget to keep an eye on your ad stats as they're running in and afterward. You can always use the data to inform your ad decisions moving forward to test different ad design ideas and even adjust your targeting to better reach the right people. You now have the knowledge you need to get started with your first couple Facebook ads. Don't forget though, we are here to help. Whether you need help creating your ad or you just need someone to do it all for you, we have marketing services that can be personalized to fit your needs and goals. Your dedicated marketing expert will make it easy for you throughout the account setup process and beyond as they work with you to develop and implement a successful marketing plan. Rates start as low as $50 a month for that. Take a look at the link we're sharing in the questions window. Under the professional marketing services section on the website, you can find information on each of the levels of service. 
From that page, you can schedule a free service consultation to determine which level of service is right for you. All right, well now it's time to ask your questions and get them answered. So feel free to type those in and we'll make sure to get all the answers to your questions. We do have a lot of people joining us today, so we should be able to get to all your questions, but if not, I'll tell you here in a minute about a lot of resources we have that you can look at as well. Now, I do wanna let you know about a webinar coming up tomorrow that I would recommend called Plan Your Email Marketing in Four Easy Steps. It's at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. This session is a really good one to take right now because it goes over how to create a marketing plan. So with 2022 just around the corner, you know, it's a good time to set up your plan for the year or at least, you know, quarter one of 2022. It's a free hour long session. If you can't actually attend live, you do get a recording sent to you. So I'd highly recommend signing up for that if you're interested in making your marketing easier for yourself. And then one more thing I just wanna note is when you close out of the webinar today, you'll get a survey pop up on your screen. Just three quick questions. Feel free to give us a little bit of feedback. We read all of your responses and we just love to see your thoughts. All right, well, let's take a look at these questions here. So we got a question about where do the leads go in your account when you've created a Facebook lead ad? And that's a really good question. Let me come back to the account. So actually what happens when the ad is live and everything's good to go, it'll be in your contacts page right here. It creates a list automatically for you. So you don't even have to do anything with that. and you will see it just in your contacts, basically. So there will be a list in here. Then you can jump over to your contacts and see who they are and start emailing them. As I mentioned, it's a good idea to have an automated email to follow up to them after they sign up. So in order to do that, there is a campaign option we have let me just show you while I'm here. If we create, we have this email automation that you can do. So you can do a welcome email template, which is just a one-time email that sends out automatically to new contacts that sign up. So this is where you wanna put the coupon that you offered, links to your website, your social media, maybe introduce yourself, thank them for signing up, you can do that. Or if you wanna have even a whole series of welcome emails, that would be one of these multi-step automations. And you'd wanna do the, when a contact joins a list option. So with that, you could even do two emails. The first one could be the one that fulfills on the offer and says, thank you. And then you could have a second one go out a couple days later that says, hey, here's how to stay in touch with us. And then it has phone number, website, social media, you know, anything else that they would need to stay in touch with you so that you're staying top of mind. Um, you know, if they've just signed up, then you're still familiar to them. They're interested in what you offer. So I would highly recommend doing this if you're doing the lead ad for sure. What other questions do we have? Here's one, if I wanna grow my list from Facebook but don't wanna pay for an ad, what options do I have? Yeah, that's a good one, a uh, good question for sure. Let me show you here, we have all of our list growth options are under our signup forms. You can create a signup form here. We have what's called a lead generation landing page. I'm gonna just click to show you what it looks like. This is a little form that you create with 
same concept as we did with the lead ad, you know, provide value, um, catch their attention, have a nice image, don't ask for too much information. And then once you've created this, you get a link to it. And then we actually have a way through Constant Contact to share that link to Facebook. You can also share it to uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. So that'll only show to your own followers, like the people that are only following you. So you're not reaching anybody outside of that bubble. And that's the advantage of an ad is you're reaching new people, people that might not know about you yet, but you know are interested in what you provide. So, um, but if you need to get started with something on social media, at the very least do this. Anybody can do this. Um, it's included in all accounts. So I highly recommend that. And we have other sign-up forms too for websites. You can do like a pop-up. We have, these two are brand new. We have one that flies out so it can slide from the top, bottom, or side of your web page. And this one's kind of cool, it's a banner. So you can have like a banner at the top or bottom of your website or just the embedded inline form. And then this option here is the what we were just looking at, the Facebook lead ad. So you can also access that from our list growth options as well. All right, any other questions? Not seeing any. So, all right, well, let me wrap up and tell you about all those resources I've been talking about. If you have any future questions about these topics, any other topics, there's a help link at the top right of your account. There, you can search for FAQs, tutorials, we have lots more webinars, and we have a great support team you can call. There's a phone number and even a live chat option as well. So they can help with specific questions about your account, troubleshoot, all of that great stuff. So uh, there's also a, a direct link to that page, constantcontact.com slash help. So that has all the hours for support and we have a blog and um, really so much content for you to look at to help you be successful with Constant Contact. So check those out if you think of any questions after the fact, but Otherwise, thanks for joining us today for our webinar. Feel free to log into your account right now, get started with your ad, and give a call if you have any questions. All right, have a great day.